Did you sever off the cousin's truck from the account? She was still using it. No, I wasn't. So I gave somebody it back. was still using it. We got text messages. She was still using it. That we so gave I informed her. her yeah. Stop. Go ahead. That when you want to change hands with a truck and a gasket, you have to explicitly let me know. Because we're talking about money, of and course. commercial insurance is extremely expensive. Show now, me, I text show me. Her and I say, my cousin have her truck back. She wants to still run with you. She said, give her my email. Show me where that is. I'm, I'm finding it for you right here. So yeah. she can sign her own contract. It's between you and her now. So yeah, she show said, me those. I haven't received anything you mean? from her yet. I, I got it. I want to see those communications. Take your time, because I know you provided them to us. And I kept yeah. saying, please separate the, you know, separate it. The insurance. If you're going to keep you. her truck on there, she's going to be responsible okay. for it. I'm only responsible for this, this one. Way. Now, did you read the contract that you signed to the plaintiff? Well, Practice I read it when we first signed it. Yes. And did it say that if you wanted to cancel the insurance, you had to give written notice to the plaintiff? I, we gave verbal, written, and everything, and text messages. You gave written, written notice? I didn't write it. I told her, okay. they're coming to get the truck next week. You can take it off. She texts me back and say, did they come get the truck? Wasn't it your responsibility? Every time she did a load yeah. for you, you would deduct I did the it. insurance cost. I did not. October 11th statement, I tried to do half because I saw that the amount that she would receive is not enough. So I was trying to accommodate because it was supposed to be monthly. So you waited on a monthly basis? To deduct it. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I should have deducted it every week. All right, fair enough. Yeah. Guess, was the defendant the only party authorized to use your gas card? Yes. So? That don't make it true. So she's lying. They told us That's what I say. She's lit three cars. I what, is, hold on. what evidence do you have that somebody else used the gas card? I just, she gave, just gave her that a is more deal than one with card. three right. cards. Did you at some point separate out the cousin into a separate account? Before we proceed with anything, I always try to get an insurance quote because that's the most expensive thing right. that you have to pay for. So after providing a quote to a cousin, she didn't respond anymore. So there was nothing to separate. So they told you that the cousin was supposed to send over all of her information yeah. to create a new account with you. Yes. Did that ever happen? No. I informed her that if you're ever going to do that, you have to explicitly let me know. Right. I have no control over what you're doing with your cousin. You can't just do that. You're giving a family member a card? What right. the hell? Did you ever send back the second gas card no. to her? She said, hold on to the gas card. Don't give the gas card to nobody. Don't, don't let her use the gas card. I didn't send it back because my cousin was supposed to, in turn, start riding with her. Then I was going to give her over the gas right. card. So the additional gas card charges are for the cousin? Yeah. Oh, I didn't approve but that. It, via that? text I didn't message. approve that, so that's still her responsibility. Are, no, 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 I get it. I'm not yeah. saying yeah. you did. What you're saying is I needed something more than a text <laughs> message saying, please separate out some accounts before I could do that. All right, we're going to have to wrap this up. So the parties are excused while we deliberate on this case. This courtroom is now in recess. obviously have before us two very strong, independent, hardworking women who have a disagreement. Now, in terms of credibility, I feel that both the plaintiff and the defendant are telling us the truth as they see it. And we have concluded that we believe the plaintiff. We believe that her records are accurate. Part of the problem here was the interjection of a third party, your cousin, into the evaluation. And overlaying all of this are federal requirements for using vehicles to transport property across state lines. The plaintiff was under an obligation, a legal obligation, to make sure that certain permits were used properly that certain deductions were made properly, and we believe that there's no evidence to contradict that she didn't do everything she could in good faith with respect to that. So consequently, we have concluded that the plaintiff is owed $4,200 and that you have failed to prove to us that the countersuit of $3,000 meets the standards that the law requires. Therefore, the verdict is in favor of the plaintiff for $4,200 and the cross-complaint is dismissed.